Hi everybody, it's Miss Aviva from the Ridgefield Public Library in Ridgefield, New Jersey, and this is an online story time. We are going to do a series of story times starting today that are about STEM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. We're going to start out by doing a science story time today by reading a couple of books that have some science themes. I'm going to start with Plant the Tiny Seed by Christy Matheson. And you might, uh, if you come to story time regularly, you might recognize this book or it might look kind of familiar because we've read other books by Christy Matheson, such as Tap the Magic Tree. Okay, I like Tap the Magic Tree. This is a book that you get to help me read. Let's do it together. Look down there, do you see that, that tiny little seed? See it? There is magic in this tiny seed. Press it down and count to three. All right, press. One, two, three. Plant another, then one more. Press them down and count to four. Okay, see we've got a tiny seed here and a tiny seed there. Okay, now help me press them down. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. What happens? All right, now they're under the dirt, they're in the ground. So now, wiggle your fingers to add some water. Can you sprinkle some water? Wiggle, 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 wiggle. All right, that's enough. Look what happened. All right, next, we need to rub the sun up here to make it hotter. sprouting and they're getting even taller. Okay, now tap the cloud and wish for rain. There we go. You see the raindrops? All right, now clap to bring the sun again. Ah, there we go. No more rain. Now, oh, and look who came along to visit. There's a snail. And there's that ladybug who was actually on the page before. And now, can you find the worm? There's a little worm. See its tail poking out? All right, now let's shoo away that hungry snail. We don't want the snail to eat our plants. Go away, snail, go away. All right, look, there's that little bud. Let's tell it good night. And guess what you'll see in the morning light. What do you think is gonna happen? Whoa, the bud turned into a flower. This kind of flower is called a zinnia. All right, so now we point at the purple flower. Bzz. Look who came to visit now. And look what's happening to the other stems. All right, let's tap this cloud again. It's another rain shower. And another zinnia. All right, now let's touch the blossoms very gently, please. Ooh, look who came to visit. It's a couple of hummingbirds. And you know, hummingbirds are just like butterflies and bees. They also drink flowers nectar. Okay, so now let's jiggle the plants to scatter their seed. Jiggle, 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 jiggle. Oh, uh-oh. See those flowers, the seeds and the petals are, are bleh, they're floating away in the breeze. All right, it needs a clip. Let's snip, swipe across the stem. Snip, snip. And now it's growing a new flower. Okay, so now close your eyes and wave your hands in the air. All of the friends came back to visit. There's magic everywhere. And that's the end.
tells us a little bit about how to plant our own seeds. There's a story by a man named Aesop about a crow who was very thirsty. All he could find was a bottle of water that had a little bit of water at the bottom, but the crow's beak wasn't long enough to reach that water for him to get a drink. This crow was very clever though, and he had the idea of dropping rocks into the bottle until the water rose up to the top where he was able to drink. That crow was using science. What happens when you put rocks in water is something called displacement. The rock pushes the water out of the way to make space for itself in the container. And if you add enough rocks, it will displace or push out enough water for the water to come up to the top. Let's see how many rocks it takes for my triceratops here to be able to get a drink. You can see right now that the water is over here. It's about halfway up this, this cup. Let's see how many we need to do. Why don't you count with me? One, two, three. Oh wow, you see we started out down here and now we're all the way up to there and that was just with three rocks. Let's see how many more we need so our triceratops can get a drink. All right, that was three, so now we're adding four and five and six. Are we there yet? Nope, but we're getting closer. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Are we there yet? Was ten enough to help our triceratops get a drink? I hope so, but let's try a couple more just to see how many we can fit. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, ah. let's see if we need one more. 16. Yep, I think our Triceratops can get a drink now. Okay, so I should have explained that science is about how we learn about the world. It's all the things that we can figure out about the world around us. Okay, and in order to learn about the world, we need to use our five senses. So we're going to read Cold, Crunchy, Colorful. Using Our Senses by Jane Brockett. We have five senses. And with them we can see and touch and taste and smell and hear. Let's find out more about our senses. We use our eyes to see the world around us. Tall buildings, trees and fields, steep streets, leafy paths. Our eyes tell us about colors. Look at these beautiful tulips and patterns. Look at these squares making a pattern and shapes. Look at that pointy window. And with our eyes, we notice words and signs. We read books and we can find numbers. We use our ears to hear. We can hear loud sounds like bells clanging, ding dong, ding dong, and water splashing or traffic honking, honk. And we can hear quiet sounds, like clocks ticking, tick, tick, tick. bees buzzing, bzzz. leaves rustling, and a cat purring. Purr. 
we use our hands to touch and feel. Rough stones, smooth bricks, sharp spikes, and a soft fluffy flower bud. Our feet also tell us how things feel. If water is cold, if grass is springy, if socks are cozy, how pebbles are hard and sand is grainy. And we feel things through our skin, through your arms and your shoulders and your legs and your face. Like when the weather is cold and snowy or hot and sunny, when it's cool and windy or wet and rainy. We use our noses to smell scented flowers, yeasty new bread, damp earthy soil when we plant bulbs. Bulbs are a special kind of seed that makes certain kinds of flowers and plants. Some smells are nice, like breakfast in the morning, blossoms in the spring, ripe peaches in summer. But some smells are stinky, like garbage or a rotten apple. Ew, yuck. We use our tongues mm, to taste. Sweet candy, sour lemons, salty peanuts, bitter lettuce leaves. And we can taste many flavors. Juicy cherries, spicy chilies, and jammy cookies oily salty fish, fluffy vanilla frosting, and cool minty toothpaste. Often we use more than one sense at a time. Can you say which senses we use when we cut out cookies? Okay, you have to use your hands, you have to use your touch to use the cookie cutter. And you can probably smell the yummy cookie dough and you can definitely taste it. What about when we take a walk outside? We can see all these plants and buildings and we can smell the fresh air and feel the breeze on our faces. And sometimes we use all five senses at once. We can see the pretzels not shape and feel the shiny glaze. Enjoy the mouth-watering smell. Mmm. And we can hear it crunch and taste the salt. Yum! We use our five senses every day. Can you name them all now? We have sight and hearing and touching and tasting and smelling. Which senses are you using right now? That's a good question. Do you know what this is? This is a magnet. A magnet is a piece of metal or a rock that can pull certain other pieces of metal or rock towards itself. The ends of my magnet here have a piece of metal inside them that is magnetic. It can pull other things. And I have a whole bunch of things over here on this towel, and I'm kind of curious which ones are also magnetic. Let's find out. All right, let's see, will this magnet stick or pull this scissors? Whoa, that's really cool. All right, let's say goodbye to that scissor. Be very careful. Do you think the magnet will stick to the crayon and pick it up? Let's try it out. Nope, this crayon is not magnetic. Bye-bye, crayon. What about this little key here? Should we see if this key is magnetic? Hmm, what if I try the other side? Nope, this key isn't magnetic. Interesting. Because it is made of metal, but I guess it's not magnetic for some reason. All right, let's see what else. What about this Lego? Nope, this Lego is not magnetic. And the rock? What do you think? Maybe the rock will be. 
Nope, the rock didn't stick. The rock is not magnetic. What about this broccoli? Do you think that this toy broccoli is magnetic? Let's try it and find out. Nope, the broccoli didn't stick to the magnet. The broccoli is not magnetic. Now we have two more things. We have these, these hooks over here. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Whoa! The hooks are magnetic. They're made of metal, so they stuck to the magnet. That's really cool. All right, I have to pull them off. I have to pull them away from the magnet or they'll stay stuck. All right, and now we have some train cars. I have to put the magnet on top of them. Nothing happens because the wood is not magnetic, but I wonder what might happen if I touch my magnet to the magnets on the side. And the train can go for a ride because the ends of the train are magnets. That's pretty cool. 